Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar. Today we are going to continue our look at the chromospheric emission lines. I hope that you watched the last video on the subject. It is an essential step to understanding this presentation. As a refresher, here is a fantastic image of the emission lines in the chromosphere obtained during the eclipse of August 21st, 2017. In the standard model, it is argued that chromospheric emission lines are produced by random events linked to temperature. Hydrogen condensation reactions are never considered. But in my earlier presentation, I argued that the chromosphere was acting to harvest hydrogen through condensation reactions. Now I want to present direct evidence that chromospheric emission lines are not randomly produced. The most striking proof comes from considering the emission lines of helium. But in order to do this, one must learn a little spectroscopy. It will not be hard, so hang in there. If you consider the helium atom, it has two electrons. In helium's lowest energy state, both of these electrons occupy the 1s shell. They are anti-parallel to one another, and we say that the net spin of the system is zero. What does that mean? Well, each electron has a spin value, symbolized by a lowercase letter s. For an electron, the magnitude of the spin is equal to one half, but spin can also have direction. If it is spin up, then we say that the spin is equal to plus one half. If it is spin down, it is equal to minus one half. You can see that the total spin is zero if both electrons are in the lower energy state. That is because one half plus minus one half is equal to zero. When considering the entire atom, we are also concerned with spin multiplicity, capital S, of an energy state. This is governed by a very simple equation. Capital S is equal to two times the total spin given by the lowercase s plus one. Now, if you excite a helium electron, it can move up to higher energy levels. There are two states to consider. First, if both electrons have the same spin, then we say that we have a triplet state, since s is equal to 1 half plus 1 half, and 2s plus 1 is now equal to 3. If the electrons have opposite spin, then we say that we have a singlet state, since 1 half plus minus 1 half is equal to 0, and 2s plus 1 is now equal to 1. Now there is a rule in chemistry known as Hund's rule, which states that the triplet state of an atom is slightly lower in energy than the singlet state. Now let's look at our helium atom with two electrons in the ground state. You can think of exciting one of the electrons into the upper energy level, but when this occurs, the electrons follow what are known as selection rules. The spin of the electron that makes the transition must not change, or stated mathematically, delta s must be zero. So if the electron spin is down in the lower energy state, it will remain down in the upper energy state. In chemistry, this transition is said to be allowed by the selection rules. However, if the spin is down in the lower energy state, it cannot be excited to be spin up in the higher energy state. That is forbidden by the selection rule. Now, let us finally consider the chromospheric spectrum. In this spectrum, you can see two readily observable helium lines. They occur at 587 and 706 nanometers. Both of these lines are very strong. They correspond to triplet transitions. The 587 line comes from a transition from an electron from the 3D to the 2P level. The 706 nanometer line comes from a transition from the 3s to the 2p level. You can see these transitions in this figure. Here is the 3d to 2p transition at 587 nanometers. Here is the 3s to 2p transition at 706 nanometers. Now, if you consider the singlet diagram, you will note that one might expect to see an emission line at 668 nanometers. That corresponds to a singlet transition from the 3D to the 2P level. You might also expect a singlet transition from 3S to 2P at 728 nanometers. In fact, those lines tend to be strong in laboratory helium spectra. The 668 nanometer line can have nearly the same intensity as the helium triplet at 587 nanometers. I have provided links to laboratory spectra in the description below. Next, 
Look at the chromospheric spectrum in this region once again. Note that the singlet 668 nanometer line is missing, even though it should have been nearly ISO intense to the 587 nanometer line. The singlet line at 728 nanometers is also absent. Now, if the astronomers were correct, and chromospheric lines were simply the product of random excitations governed by temperature, those singlet lines should be there, just like they are in the laboratory. In fact, the problem is much worse than this. In order to account for the triplet lines in the chromosphere and not violate the selection rules, astronomers must first get rid of an electron from helium. Then they have to permit ionized helium atoms to recombine with the free electron to make the triplet and allow the triplet to relax to give the triplet emission line. The problem is that photodissociation of helium requires photons reflecting temperatures of upwards of 200,000 Kelvin. But these are chromospheric lines. Many other chromospheric lines suggest temperatures for the chromosphere of well below 10,000 Kelvin. And those lines are coming from the same region of the sun. So how do astronomers get the 200,000 Kelvin that they need? They invoke that helium is being photoionized by light emitted in the corona. But if that was true, then why are you not ionizing all the atoms in the chromosphere? Why only helium? And why are you producing only triplets? This is obviously not reasonable. Nothing is random here, and chromospheric emission lines are likely to be completely unrelated to temperatures. They have something to do with chemical reactions. That is why the singlet lines are absent. Helium emission is telling us that the process is not random. It is also important to pay attention to helium-2 emission lines. Those lines are produced when helium has lost an electron. Helium-2 lines can be particularly strong in the sun, with increased solar activity as you can see here. In the end, I have advanced that helium-2 lines and the helium triplet lines are associated with condensation reactions, as you can see in this figure. The scheme is a little complex for this video, but you are welcome to read the paper. In any case, one thing is clear. Chromospheric helium lines are telling us something important about the sun. Nothing is random here, and the lines which we observe are likely to be associated with chemical condensation, not random processes. Now before we end, there is one more thing to notice about the spectra from the chromosphere which suggests that nothing is random with these emission lines. Notice how strong all the lines are relative to the lines of hydrogen. Now the question of intensity in emission lines is complicated by the fact that different atoms can have different inherent line strengths. Still, there is something to be noted. By total number of atoms, oxygen is supposed to have an abundance of less than one-tenth of the percent of the number of hydrogen atoms in the sun. Yet look at the strength of the oxygen line around 780 nanometers. Then consider the calcium lines at 490 and 860 nanometers. Wow, are those lines ever strong, when you consider that calcium is estimated to be less than one hundredth of one percent of the number of hydrogen atoms. Something is clearly enhancing the calcium lines and all the others relative to hydrogen. This phenomenon cannot be random. It is unlikely to be due to inherent line strengths. This strongly suggests that chemistry is going on here. You see unusual enhancements of those lines most favored in condensation reactions from atoms which should easily make the hydrides. I've added a link below to the abundances of elements in the sun if you are interested. Such estimates are complex and take in many factors, but they are also a reasonable guide. Something is just not quite right with the idea that emission lines in the chromosphere are just the result of random processes, and the absence of helium singlet emission lines also reminds us of this fact. If you enjoyed the video today, promote the channel, support it with a like, and subscribe for more videos as we look more closely at the sun, the stars, and beyond. Comments are always welcome down below, and I'll see you soon on our next video.